Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Learning Stethoscope. In this video, we're going to break down the mechanics of breathing, how we actually move air in and out of our lungs. So what is breathing? Breathing or pulmonary ventilation is the process of moving air in and out of the lungs. When we breathe in is called inspiration, and when we breathe out is called expiration. But the air doesn't move on its own. It needs help. And that help comes from the pressure changes created by the ventilatory muscles. Breathing is all about pressure. To truly grasp how breathing works, you need to understand two basic physics principles. First is that air flows from high pressure to low pressure. So, to pull air into your lungs, the air needs to go from a place of high pressure outside your body into a low pressure inside your chest. That's how we suck in the air. So, the pressure inside the chest needs to be negative when compared to outside. And when we exhale, the opposite happens. The pressure inside the chest must rise above the outside pressure in order to push the air out. Secondly, we have the Boyle's Law. It states that if the volume of a space increases, the pressure inside it decreases, and vice versa. Let's take a look at this box as an example. If we increase its volume, then its pressure decreases. It's the same thing for our chest cavity. If we use our muscles to increase the volume of our chest, pressure inside the lungs drops and air rushes in. These two principles are the foundation of how we breathe. Let's take a quick look at the lungs. They're surrounded by the pleura, which is thin, double-layered membrane that surrounds each lung, kind of like a protective envelope. It has two main layers, the visceral pleura, which is attached directly to the surface of the lungs, and it moves with the lung as it expands and contracts. And the parietal pleura lines the inside of the chest wall, the diaphragm, and the mediastinum. Between these two layers is a thin space called the pleural cavity, which contains a small amount of pleural fluid, like a lubricant. This fluid reduces friction as the lungs move during breathing and creates surface tension that helps the lungs stay stuck to the chest wall. So, when the chest expands, the lungs expand too. Then we have the two main muscles that drive inspiration. The diaphragm located below the lungs and the intercostal muscles located between the ribs. During exercise or respiratory distress, other muscles known as accessory muscles also help, like the sternocleidomastoid and scalenes. All these muscles, and especially the diaphragm and intercostal muscles, are responsible for changing the volume of the thoracic cavity. And as we learned with Boyle's Law, when the volume changes, so does the pressure. And it's these pressure changes that allow us to move air in and out of the lungs as we breathe in and out. Let's go over the three main pressures that are essential to understand ventilation. Imagine we're at rest, meaning we are not inhaling or exhaling. We have the atmospheric pressure. This is the pressure of the air outside your body. At sea level, it's usually about 760 millimeters of mercury, but in physiology, we simplify things by setting it as the reference point, zero millimeters of mercury. This makes it easier to talk about other pressures relative to atmospheric pressure. Then we have the intrapulmonary pressure. This is the pressure inside the lungs, specifically in the alveoli. At rest, intrapulmonary pressure is also approximately 760 millimeters of mercury. So, since it's the same as the atmospheric pressure, we say it's equal to zero millimeters of mercury. And finally, we have the intrapleural pressure, which is the pressure inside the pleural cavity. And in a healthy person, it's always negative, usually around minus four millimeters of mercury at rest. Why is it negative? Think of your lungs and chest wall as two forces pulling in opposite directions. On one side, the lungs are trying to collapse inward due to elastic recoil. On the other side, the chest wall naturally wants to expand outwards. This constant tug of war creates a small negative pressure in the pleural space, resulting in a suction effect. This negative pressure is super important because is what keeps the lungs stuck to the chest wall preventing them from collapsing. But if something breaks this balance, let's say air gets into the pleural cavity like in a pneumothorax, then that negative pressure is lost and the lungs are no longer held open and they collapse. What happens during inspiration? How do we breathe in? 
It all starts with our respiratory center, located in the brainstem. It sends signals to the inspiratory muscles, activating the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles. The diaphragm is a dome-shaped muscle located at the bottom of our chest, below the lungs. When the diaphragm contracts, it moves downward, increasing the vertical dimension of the thoracic cavity. The external intercostal muscles are located between the ribs and they also contract, lifting the ribs up and outwards and increasing the anteroposterior dimension of the chest cavity. We can see this better from a side view of our thoracic cavity. We have the vertebra on the back and the ribs in the front. Between the ribs, we have the intercostal muscles and below the lungs, we have the diaphragm. Now, during inspiration, the diaphragm contracts and moves downward, increasing the vertical dimension of the chest. And as the external intercostal muscles contract, the ribs lift and expand outwards, increasing the anteroposterior volume of the chest. Both these actions lead to an increase in the volume of the chest cavity, which in turn causes the lungs to expand. Just as we learned with Boyle's Law, when volume increases, pressure decreases. So during inspiration, as the chest cavity and lungs expand, the volume increases, and this causes the intrapulmonary pressure to drop. It becomes negative relative to atmospheric pressure, reaching about minus 4 millimeters of mercury. And since air always flows from areas of high pressure to low pressure, this pressure difference pulls air into the lungs, and that's how we breathe in. Now, the expiration phase is different. Expiration is usually a passive process, meaning it usually no muscle contraction needed. So, here's what happens. The diaphragm relaxes and moves back up, and the intercostal muscles relax, and the ribs goes down. This decreases the volume of the chest. And like Boyle's Law states, if the volume decreases, the intrapulmonary pressure increases and becomes positive and higher than the atmospheric pressure to around plus one millimeter of mercury, so this means that the air flows out of the lungs naturally. Additionally, the lungs have a special characteristic that also helps air flow out, the elastic recoil. This is the natural tendency of the lungs to spring back after they've been stretched during inhalation. Imagine blowing up a balloon. When you stop blowing, the balloon automatically shrinks back to its original shape, right? That's elastic recoil. The lungs do the same thing. After you take a breath in and the lungs get inflated, they want to snap back to their resting size, meaning they want to recoil and assume the smallest size possible. This elastic recoil helps push air out of your lungs during normal exhalation. So we usually don't need to use our muscles to breathe out. Our lungs recoil, do that on their own. Elastic recoil happens because of two main reasons. First, the presence of elastic fibers in the lung tissue. The lungs are full of stretchy fibers like rubber bands. When you inhale, you stretch those fibers. When you exhale, they snap back, just like a stretched out rubber band recoiling. Second, the surface tension inside the alveoli. Each alveolus in your lungs is lined with a thin layer of fluid. The water molecules in that fluid stick together and create surface tension. This surface tension acts like a pulling force that tries to make the alveoli shrink and collapse. That's why the body produces surfactant, which is a substance made by type 2 alveolar cells and contains phospholipids that repel each other outward. This, in turn, opposes the inward collapsing forces of surface tension and helps to keep alveoli open so the lungs don't collapse. So during relaxed expiration, it's a passive process. But sometimes we need to push more air out, like when we are exercising or coughing. In those cases, the internal intercostals contract and pull the ribs down and inward. And the abdominal muscles push the diaphragm up by increasing abdominal pressure. These actions further reduce thoracic volume and increase pressure to push air out faster. And that's it. The mechanics of breathing. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to The Learning Stethoscope for more easy-to-understand medical videos. And don't forget to share it with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.